Here's where my life get tricky. First day of high school, I got dressed in a nice outfit, and I walked in the first day just like this. Now, when I left sports and got into the real world, I was amazed at how some people struggle with confidence. And here's how I'm going to help your revenue today. I'm going to say some things that are going to be controversial. I'm going to say some things that are going to challenge how you've been trained and taught, but I'm also going to show you some things on how I doubled my MBA income in three years and how we're on the verge of busting this thing wide open. Everyone in this room, your self-esteem is connected to a number. And I don't know what your number is. You might say to yourself, you know what, we're a little small $10 million company. You know, we're a little $5 million company. You know, we're a $20 million company. And because you have set the number, that's all you're going to ever be. It happened in school. We were conditioned that way in school. Remember those A students? Remember those kids? Straight A's, they got one freaking B, we had to put them on suicide watch. Remember those annoying kids? I mean, seriously, one B, and not only are they rattled, mom and dad is rattled, and they got to set up a parent-teacher conference because their kid has never gotten B in their lives, which means there's something wrong with you teaching, not my child. You remember those kids? Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, most of these universities have suicide hotlines because some of these kids are getting the first freaking B in their lives, and they can't take it. Are you with me? See, they see themselves as A students, and nothing less than an A will do. Remember those C students. A C student can get an A on the midterm. And a C student, even though they have an A at the midterm, will say this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I got an A on the midterm. My mom and dad swear I cheated. <laughs> but I didn't. I don't know what got into me. I actually studied and prepared, and I aced that bad boy. But you know me. <laughs> I'm going to flag the final. I'm going to forget some homework. And before you know it, that C student will sabotage themselves until they get back to that C where they're comfortable. Why? They see themselves as a C student. So as a result, they will work hard until they get back to that C where they're comfortable. That's the same thing happens when you set financial goals in your head. And some of you guys have done this for years. You know, we do about 10, 12 million. And you've been saying that for five years. <laughs> and as a result, even though you have some growth potential, you will sabotage yourself until you get back to that 10 to 12 million. Is everybody with me? Here's what I do. I don't have a number in my head. My goal is to speak to the marketplace and let the marketplace speak back. Does that make sense to anybody? So as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, you should not have a number in your head. Because just like a tree, every year your company should get bigger, every year your company should get stronger, every year your company should get faster. Go look at your house 10 years ago and pay attention to the trees. Pay attention to the bushes. You'll say, man, 10 years ago this tree was that big, but now look at it now. Shouldn't your company reflect the same type of growth? But if you say to yourself, oh, we're about a $20 million company, and you say that every freaking year, that's all you're going to ever be. You insert your number. So the reason we've grown exponentially, we don't have a number in our head to sabotage. We don't have a number in our head that's going to cause us to become complacent. Does that make sense? Every year I get bigger. Every year I get stronger. Every year as a business leader, I get faster. And my expectation, since my company is a reflection of me, I expect the marketplace to speak differently back to me. Does, does everybody hear what I'm saying? So if you don't like the revenue you're making, you've made one huge mistake. you set a financial goal that has crippled you and kept you in the same state for the last five or ten years. Can we be honest? Is anyone in this room guilty of that? Raise your hand. Do me a favor. Erase the number in your head. 
And every day, speak to the marketplace. Speak to it differently. And the marketplace will speak back. So now let's force it get into the real world. I began to realize that people are really afraid to go for it. We kind of stay in this little cocoon where it's safe. Does that make sense? And ladies, can I give you a message real quick, ladies? I'm looking around this room, and ladies are slowly starting to take over business, and here's why. You guys actually listen. You actually pay attention to detail. And women do a fantastic job building relationships. If you don't believe me, go to your local restaurant and pay attention to two women having lunch. Nobody else in the restaurant matters. Oh my God, really? You must have felt horrible. Well, what did he say? Oh, women are really good active listeners. You get two men at lunch, totally different deal. Uh, what's your name again? Are you gonna buy this or not? <laughs> Totally different deal. But women, can I help you with one thing? For some reason, women can be hard on each other. You hear women say this all the time. Oh, I don't like that woman right there. She thinks she's all that. Ladies, help me finish this statement. Who does she? Did you guys hear that? They knew exactly where I was going. Who does she think she is? Now let me help you out, girlfriend. The only way someone's confidence can offend or annoy you is if you struggle with your own confidence. Now as an NBA player, you guys saw my highlight. I scored against Michael Jordan. For that one moment in time, Michael Jordan, you suck. <laughs> now you notice I edited out the rest of the game. But for that one moment, when Michael Jordan's guarding me, I can't cower, can I? I'm an NBA player, you're an NBA player, let's go, let's compete. Now, could you imagine me going up to Michael Jordan and saying, yo, Mike, who do you think you are? Could I ask Michael Jordan that question? You know, his answer would be something like this. I'm glad you asked, I'm shocked you asked, but just for the record, I'm the best basketball player ever. Second of all, I was so dominant, I got bored with basketball, tried baseball, sucked, and came back. Walter, I'm so good. Within 15 years of my retirement, I became a billionaire and bought my own team. When most people think of the name Mike, most people think of me. Hi. Everybody wants to be like Mike. Michael Jordan knows he's Michael Jordan. I'm pretty confident that he didn't wake up in the morning and say, whoa, snap, I'm Mike. <laughs> I just realized that I'm freaking Mike. Can I go to Oprah Winfrey and say, uh, Oprah, who do you think you are? Oprah will say, you know what, I'm glad you asked. First of all, I'm one of the few female billionaires you will ever meet. Second of all, I built a media empire Got bored, launched my own magazine, and I'm the only one worthy of being on the cover every month. <laughs> I'm known around the world by my first name only. Hi. I'm Oprah. So the question should never be, who does she think she is? The question should always be, who do I think I am? Because whoever you think you are, that's exactly who you're going to become. So can you do me one favor? Get the number out your head. So if you see yourself as a $5 million person, that's all you're going to ever be. If you see yourself as a $10 million person, that's all you and your company are going to ever be. If you're floundering just to get to $2 million or whatever your number is, a half million, I don't know what your number is, but you guys hear what I'm saying. Get the number out your head. When I left sports and got into the real world, here's how I learned that lesson. I sat down with the HR professional. And they had the nerve to tell me that after eight years of professional basketball, two years broadcasting for the Minnesota Timberwolves, this little HR professional told me my resume was like. That we're looking for someone with more experience. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> now I get all I could put on my resume was Dallas Mavericks, Detroit Pistons, Utah Jazz, but how dare you tell me my resume's light? What that resume should tell you, I already know how to compete in the global marketplace. 
The NBA is a global industry. What that resume should tell you, I know how to set high goals and achieve them. What that resume should tell you, I'm an expert on teamwork. What that resume should tell you is that I'm an ultimate high achiever. How dare you tell me my resume's light? As far as I'm concerned, my resume is heavy. I need help lifting this resume. And this HR professional sat down and says, OK, Walter, well, we like you. So we're going to offer you $28,000. Now, I didn't understand how corporate America worked. So I thought to myself, $28,000 a month? I can make that work. And then I was like, $28,000 a year? For 12 months? <laughs> and that's when I made up my mind to become an entrepreneur. For you entrepreneurs out there, hear me clearly. I made up my mind to never let another human being tell me what I'm worth. I want the marketplace to tell me my value. And every year, you know what the marketplace says? You're worth more. So here's what I want you to do, business leaders, business owners. Take that number out your head and work on you. If you get bigger, if you get stronger, if you get faster, that marketplace will respond to you. If you become an expert in marketing and branding, that marketplace will respond to you. When I think about building a brand, it's really simple. Who are you, what do you do, and how do you do it? Everything about your marketing should be about who you are, what you do, and how you do it. See, the how you do it is how you differentiate from your competition. If I can't go to your website and figure out who you are, what you do, and how you do it in 90 seconds or less, your website sucks. I have a marketing program called The Mousetrap. When you think about business, all we do is set mousetraps. See, if you got a really good mousetrap, you can keep catching the same freaking mice with the same freaking trap. Am I right or wrong? See, if you don't like the level in which you fill your pipeline and close deals, you don't have a good mousetrap. A mousetrap's job is to catch what? So if I go to your website, do you have a good mousetrap? If I do a Google search, do you have a good mousetrap? If you call your office and see and talk to your receptionist, do you have a good mousetrap? See, the reason why we kick our competition's butt, we have set a great mousetrap and we catch a whole lot of mice.